Good morning or good afternoon, whatever the case is in your neck of the woods. My name is Fred Lindsley and I'm going to take a few minutes this morning to review the calendar contact management and client relationship management features within Imagine Time. In this first module, we're going to discuss the overview and setup of the Imagine Time calendar. In front of you, you're looking at a calendar for FOL uh, for the week of April 5th. I've set it up to display six days through Saturday. I could show more. If you have a large monitor, you can show as many as 10 and then scroll to the right to see as many as 30 in the virtual grid. Now, that doesn't mean you're limited to 30 days. You can uh, click in any time period and, and see those appointments. It just means that the current presentation is, is a 30-day view. Now, you can expand the grid to take over the whole screen. And if you're an office administrator that schedules appointments for everybody, that's a very convenient feature. You can also see your tasks and firm tasks. Now, displayed here are my firm tasks. These are from the Imagitime due date management system. And I have a variety of sorts and filters that I can use. And we'll get into this a little bit more later. If I click the user tasks button up here, I'm looking at my personal tasks. Let's take a look uh, at an appointment. But before we do that, just to show you how easy it is to switch to somebody else's calendar. And I, I can also use a department feature, which I'll talk about in just a moment. All right, so right now let's click back to me and let's, uh, let's go to this appointment and I'm going to double click on it. Now, what did I just do? Well, I clicked on the appointment. It, it became selected. It's white. Then I double clicked. Okay, now that's the appointment dialog. And I can see, you know, the type of to do, uh, the priority status, who it's assigned to, do I want a reminder associated with it. And over here, my subject and my main text. This is this follows the Microsoft Outlook manner of doing things, um, a subject and a text. The subject will appear in the appointment dialog along with the client that the appointment has been assigned to. Also on this dialog, I have my power options. I can create a recurring appointment, daily, monthly, weekly, yearly. I can copy other staff on this appointment. If the appointment's been assigned to a client, I can also record the appointment as a time slip. That's a nice time-saving feature. Get your calendar set up properly, take the time to type in your appointment information. A time slip will be created for that client with the appropriate start and end time and the description already filled in. You would have to assign a work code at that point to complete the time slip. I'm going to close the dialog. There are some other power options in there that are um, important that you could take a look at on your own. Another thing that I can do is right click on an appointment. If I right click on an appointment, I get the contact management screen. That's going to show me any client notes. Don't have too many on this particular client. Their address and phone information and their status information as well as any tasks that have been assigned to them. Now, the difference between an appointment and a personal task, not a firm task, which is a due date item, the difference between an appointment and a personal task is that a task is assigned for a day. It's due on a particular day, whereas an appointment has a day and a time. The calendar tool comes with a powerful note tool. So I could send a note to client, or I can change this and send it to a staff person. Oh, there's a, an appointment reminder. I'm going to send this to Fritz, and I'll copy Wendy on it, and uh, audit uh, reschedule. Now, if I if I set this up properly, it's going to generate a pop-up alert to the other staff people that are notified based upon the refresh rate in the calendar. And you'll see more about that in a minute. 
I would like to also show you in the calendar the all staff view. If I click switch views up here, now, now I'm looking at what everybody is doing in this small firm for April 10th or April 7th or April 5th, so on like that. If you're an appointment scheduler and someone is out and you need to See, there's my notification on an inner office memo that's coming through. I'm going to cancel that. Let's say uh, Joanne is not available to go to this text planning meeting. I could move it to somebody else's calendar, just like that. The other useful tool in the All Staff view is the department feature. The top left of the screen you notice right now I'm seeing everyone in all departments. For larger firms it's useful to have a filter so right now I want to see the administration department. Now I'm looking at just the members of that department. Departments are assigned in the staff setup screen again that's in utilities under edit staff information and you would select the staff and then go to the department's favorites ribbon and assign them to a particular department. I'm going to switch back to the single staff view and I'd like to discuss the setup options. Setup options are on the calendar ribbon right here and they're for the current logged in user. And the options here pertain to the grid. This set of options pertains to the <coughs> excuse me, to the monthly calendar view. What's important here is the colors that you choose to depict priorities, whether you want the calendar and the contact screen to load automatically when you open Imagine Time. If you're usually in the office, then you're going to want, when you create an appointment, you're going to want to be able to uh, show a little house when you're in and not show that when you're out. You, you do want to click the Use Default Outlook Settings button because that sets up the subject to display similar to the way it appears in Outlook. and Everybody seems to be accustomed to that. Down here is where I mentioned about popping up inner office messages and how often do you check for messages? One minute, three minutes. If you got a fast network with just a couple people on, a minute is fine. If you have an exchange server and you're also hosting Imagine Time on that, maybe you want to stretch out the interval a little bit. This is also relevant here. How far back do you want to be able to go to look at prior appointments? Appointments aren't deleted, but whatever it is held in the calendar for viewing is determined based upon this setting. So if I set this to 365, then if I scroll back, I'll be able to see back a full year. Now I can come in and change that to a smaller or a larger number. Again, it doesn't delete appointments. Also important to mention is that your calendar settings will change when you close and reopen the calendar. So in order for settings to take effect, you need to close the calendar and then reopen it. Some of the other settings that are relevant are this display by staff feature. You do want to be able to edit. You want to make sure that this is checked or when you're in the all staff view with multi-staff displaying for a particular day, you won't be able to edit. Uh, calendar side by side. The lookup lists, they're important when you first get started. Uh, something that's suitable for your firm to describe appointments and tasks. Also maybe describe your products that you offer so you can associate uh, appointments and tasks with uh, products. <coughs> Excuse me just a moment. And finally firm holidays. You can set up your own holidays and they will appear on the calendar. All day appointments are displayed at the top of a day, just like that. Now, to, to bring this home, to set up an appointment, you can either click anywhere on a day and just double click your mouse. It'll pull up the dialog at that point, associate it with a client. I recommend you type something useful in the subject other than the client's name, testing one, two, three. And again, you have this other section down here for more info. Useful to set a good type. And uh, if I was assigning this to somebody else, I would change the assignment here, but I'm not. 
Let me change the time frame to make it an hour and a half, and I'll close it. And here it is, uh, both the name of the client and a short description. Well, again, also notice the house here. It's an in-office appointment. Now, if I want to change that, double-click, uncheck in-office, and now that's been changed. If I want to change the priority, okay, let's make this a high priority, just like that. Want to move it? Easier just to click on it and drag it down like that. Want to lengthen it? I can drag it down like that. Depending upon the options that I choose, I can show half hours or quarter hours. Right now the calendar is set for half hours. That's again in my options display quarter hours on calendar instead of half hours. Also in my options are the number of days that I want to display at once in the calendar column display. If you have a 24 inch monitor, go for 10. You can also scroll to the, scroll to the right to see more days. Here's a little bit about your holiday country. And you do want to show appointment reminders. Okay, I think that covers the basics on the grid except maybe one other way to enter appointments. I showed you how to just click on a, a particular time and then double click. You could also just click and, and start typing. Testing one, two, three. And grab that bottom handle, drag it down. And I avoided using the dialog at, uh, completely in that particular case. I'm going to discuss the monthly calendar briefly. I'm going to drag it over from another grid. Here's the monthly calendar. This is also nice for a firm administrator. You'll notice that as I hover over a day, on the right side, I'm seeing a complete listing of appointments. Now I'm going to click to anchor the day, and now I can go over here and see everything that all staff are doing on that day. And this is organized chronologically. Notice up here I can focus on all staff or just one staff. I can also print this. I, I should mention a few of the printing uh, features in the calendar. I will in just a moment. As I click off of this, the anchor is uh, removed and now I'm scrolling each day again. Now you can see most of what's going on in the grid, but if you have 10 or 12 staff, you're not going to see it here. You're going to have to look over to the right. And unless I anchor it, it's going to do that. So anchor and then look. So that's your monthly view. You can also print the monthly view. You can print the grid right here. If you want to print a grid that looks exactly like the grid on the screen, you're going to use this button here. If you want to print a useful uh, appointment report, let's see how we do here. This will show a, a listing of appointments with their priorities, including tasks. It's a nice listing to use. If at any point in time during the use of the calendar you need some more help, press the F1 key. It will pop up our comprehensive help system for whatever screen that you're on. I should also mention that in help you have a thorough table of contents index and a nice search feature. So it's a good tool. Please use help. Remember to press the F1 key. Okay, I, I would be remiss if I didn't discuss the permissions that govern the use of the calendar and the integrated due date system that can be used with the calendar. In order to do that, I'm going to go to the Setup Utilities ribbon and click Enter Edit Staff. That loads this screen select any user and click your permissions and options. On the left side, the general rights level that you assign to this staff person when uh, accessing the time and billing and other modules, and then some specific rights pertaining to the calendar, the most obvious of which is whether or not I can edit other people's appointments. If I choose view and change my appointments tasks and view others, I can look at other people but not edit their appointments. I can also limit a staff person to looking at just their appointments. I also want to mention that in the appointment dialog there's a private checkbox so that you can prevent the details from being seen. Uh, a time block will be allocated but another user won't actually be able to tell what the appointment's all about. 
other permissions pertaining to the calendar, or whether or not the staff person should be permitted to access their due date or firm tasks on the right side of the calendar. Uh, calendar firm task due date assignments, should I permit the user to change an assignment, assign it to Joe instead of to myself? Uh, most of the time staff people aren't allowed to change the assignments. In a very open firm, uh, it doesn't matter. I can also uh, allow the user to change the manager assignments as well. And that can be done from within the calendar. Now in the due date system, the schedule of the client screen allows a user full access to change whatever they wish. Another uh, feature is whether or not to permit a staff person to adjust the final due date. In the calendar, on the firm task, dialog over here, we have a final date. Now a good example would be uh, several years tax returns, they're already late, but so that the statutory date doesn't mean anything. But we promise the client to deliver them on such and such a date. That is the final adjusted date. Do we allow a staff person to modify that date? That's what this feature in the permissions tab of the staff screen is talking about. One other very important feature is in the due date monitoring screen itself. Due date monitoring screen is also accessed from the calendar ribbon right over here. And in the right middle, a checkbox, should we prevent staff from completing or deploying firm tasks? Many firms allow the staff to complete a status up to the point that it's ready for review, but not to actually mark a return as being complete. So that's an important feature for some firms. Another aspect of uh, the calendar that we'll talk about is whether you want to detach it from the Imagine Time window. If I click the down arrow here and choose Floating Window, I can actually move the calendar to another monitor. That's a very convenient feature. I'm sorry I left it out of the other section, but I just stick it in here. I think we've covered all the important features. Um, the, the notes, the inner office aspect of the notes, the notes pertaining to the due date, by the way, I didn't mention this, are right here. So if I have a due date item selected and I click the note, it will immediately load the note for that particular tax or task. And I can say client uh, late with information. So that's an example of how I can create a history about the due date items right from within the calendar display. Which, which, which is why the calendar integrated with the due date is so important. In many firms, you don't want the staff altering due date items. You want them to simply focus on the items that have been assigned to them, not see other due date items for other staff. So the calendar allows you to do that. It allows you to complete the status of the items to the extent you're permitted to do so for each item on the footer of the screen. The header allows the staff person to filter items based upon the status of the item, complete or not complete, a date range, and status levels. He can also, he or she can also print a report. Finally, the staff person can click this little clock right here and record a time slip for a particular calendar, uh, for a particular due date item. So if I click that, it's going to pop up the time entry window with everything filled out except uh, the actual work code that's going to be used. Okay, it's going to abandon that. And that concludes the orientation and quick setup on the calendar. Uh, the next two modules are going to discuss synchronization.